Okay. Hey, this is part two of the DIY restringing your offset umbrella or overhanging umbrella. Part two, using paracord for two bucks. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this one is because I broke the string uh, just yesterday. So I have to take it down. I have to restring it. And I thought this video, I'd do a better job on showing you the gears. Um, people enjoyed my last video on how to restring your umbrella, but I didn't do a good job on showing you how to take the gears in and out. So I'm going to do that in this video. And uh, yeah, I've had this umbrella for close to 12 years. Okay, not the cloth itself. This is a couple years old. I got it actually off of uh, Craigslist. A lady had a <clears throat> an umbrella that was just like this and uh, she lost the framing and everything broke because of the high winds. But oddly enough, there wasn't even a a rip or a hole inside this so I bought it for five bucks threw it back on there so you should be able to get years of use out of these and you might have to cob a couple things together to make it work but um, you know should last you a while I don't know how you guys are holding or hanging your umbrellas or tying them down I should say but these bungee cords with the balls work really well um, I use them on all my umbrellas and that keeps it well so, and then another thing, you guys may be experiencing this, you know, from all the sun, this thing is weathered and starts cracking and you need this to move back and forth and hold it into place. Um, I use these clamps and they've worked for the last couple years. So as you can see, I've been Frankensteining this, uh, this umbrella, but man, I'm going on some usage with this. So stay tuned. Again, I am going to go over the gears, how to take them out, put them back in properly. Let's see if it okay. works. Okay, I have it in my makeshift workshop right here on my patio. All right. So again, if you need the video to show you how to restring it, attach it, all that stuff, go to my first video. This is just basically on the gears and the washers and the components inside. Okay. So a couple things, the only tools you're gonna need, 14 millimeter socket, a really thin, small, standard screwdriver. Um, you will need a Phillips one to take off the uh, screws, of course. Um, needle nose pliers come in handy, all right? And um, <clears throat> a little wire brush, okay? And then we'll take a look to see what it, all the metal gears and whatnot look like inside. A little towel, obviously. And then a couple things that if you want to, I mean, WD-40, I'll show you how I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use a little lime away. And then I'm gonna try something here, the Sil Glide. I use it on my brake pads when I do brake jobs and so forth. It's like a lubricant, right? Never tried it before, it should work though. And then again, hey, the $2 parachute cord from Walmart. The packaging looks a little different than my last video, but $1.97, they still offer it, okay? You're gonna need that. But again, I'm not gonna show you how to restring it. I'm just gonna concentrate on this. So stay tuned. Okay, step one, do the screws, take them out. Take this, put it to the side, okay? And there's the components. Now I went ahead about, you know, 10 minutes ago and sprayed a little WD, okay? To kind of free up everything. You can tell it's kind of rusty and whatnot, but it'll help when you disassemble it. So again, spray, wait 10 minutes, come back, all right? And uh, what you're gonna wanna do first here is you have these two little clamps that need to be bent down, okay? Just like so, all right? Then you go with your 14 millimeter. That came off easy. All right, now from here, this is your tidbit. When you take these things off, line them up the way you took them off because you're gonna go backwards, okay? Nut. The crimp washer. Another washer. Okay, this is the important part. You're gonna probably need to put your finger here and push on this little trigger, okay? That's the main thing, that's the gear. Really the only gear, okay? The rest are washers and whatnot. So, 
There's another washer underneath that. Okay. And then another washer. These washers come in handy, so do not lose them. And you got to put them in the same way. Let's see, here's another washer. This is like a D. I don't know if I'm getting that in the camera. Like a letter D, okay? You see it's a little different on the bottom, but that is going to go at an angle like this, okay? I'll show you that when we install it back. And then let's see, kind of another little plastic semicircle, but it does have a cutout up on top, so it's flat right there, right? And then the big guy. Now it has grooves here and here, and if you notice, there's grooves there and there, right? Okay, so. But uh, this is what it should look like when you take them all out. Line them up. Started with that one. Okay, now when we assemble it, we're gonna go backwards. So what would be helpful is maybe taking a photo once you get these out, and that'll help you when you go to put it back in. All right, so okay, stay tuned. while I restring this, which probably takes you, I don't know, <clears throat> 10, 15, 20 minutes to do when you open it up and make sure everything's secure down here on the umbrella part and up through the tube and whatnot. Uh, what I would recommend is using this Lime Away or, you know, WD, put some in there, anything that might help knock the nust, dust and rust and grime off it. Just throw them right in there. All right. Just let them marinate. You can even throw this big plastic thing in there as long as you're doing something that's not uh, using something that'll melt plastic, which I doubt. So um, I'm going to restring it, come back. The next will be how to put everything back in. All right. Okay. It's all restrung. And now we move into the assembly. One thing that I didn't bore you with is I used this sill glide stuff on all the washers, the gear. I went ahead and just put some on both sides um, after I got them out of the lime away bath and dried them off. So let's get right to it. We start with this big boy, okay? Yeah, and it has the slots, should fit right in. Okay. Next is that plastic piece, and that one has to go at an angle, okay? Kind of like that, if you can see it. Sorry, I can't get any closer on the zoom. Then the D, the D guy. Okay, again, kind of at an angle. Right there. All right, washer. A bigger washer. All right, the gear itself. Now you're gonna have to move this trigger back a bit. Just slip this on. And as you can see, it already found the, one of the teeth on the, uh, the gear itself. Okay, that's important. Another washer. So basically you have two big washers squishing that gear in so it won't pop out. The crimp washer, and then the nut. Okay. Get out the 14, tighten it up just a bit. You don't want it too tight. Just enough to hold it in and I think that crimp um, washer kind of comes in handy also. So then needle nose to help you pry it back up. One. Let's get it worked a little bit there. All right, that's it. So the gear is in function, or I should say the trigger is in function with the gear. We crank, should work. Last step is take it outside. I'll leave the cover off so we can check it. Might have to check it, but uh, again, take it outside and see if she opens up. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's see if this works. Oh, I can hear it clicking. I can hear it clicking. 
I don't know if I can do this one handed, but that's what it looks like. And then she's up. Ready to go. So I hope that helps you. You know, they make, there's different manufacturers of these overhanging umbrellas, but I'm guessing the internals are at least the same. You know, the function is the same and so forth. So yeah, I hope this helps you. Have yourself a good day.